Oscar Rivas moves to 26-0 with 18 KOs, scoring a 12th round TKO victory over Bryant Jennings. Now, prior to this fight, I hadn't actually seen much of Oscar Rivas. I've seen a few clips of his fights. I'd seen, I'd actually, I'd actually kind of skimmed through uh, one of his full fights, but I didn't watch it from start to finish. So my knowledge on this guy was limited, but from what I had seen of him, he looked strong and pretty well schooled from what I'd seen of him previously, but I didn't see anything spectacular. And I assumed Bryant Jennings was going to win this fight on points. That's what I was thinking in my head. I think I might have mentioned that in the video. I thought, yeah, Jennings will probably win it on points. Now, I was quite impressed when this fight started with Oscar Rivas' jab. It was a fast jab. It was solid. And it was pretty accurate. So that's something I picked up on early, which I hadn't picked up on when I skimmed through one of his fights uh, uh, previously and looked at a few clips, but he's got a very solid jab, very fast and accurate. There isn't much head movement there from Oscar Rivas, and he is a short heavyweight, standing just over six feet tall. So not much head movement, doesn't have the quickest work rate, but as I say, he is pretty well schooled, and he counter punches well on the front foot. He doesn't apply relentless pressure, but it's steady pressure, and he'll jab you, he'll hit you with them solid jabs, wait for you to make a mistake, and then pounce on you with hard counters. That tends to be his approach, at least from what I saw here against Bryant Jennings. So he was doing well early on against Jennings. I don't think I gave Jennings more than one round out of the first six or the first five, something like that. But as the fight progressed, Rivas seemed to slow down quite a lot. And Jennings came into the fight. It might, it might have been one round out of the first four or five that I gave Jennings. I, I, I can't remember now, but I seem to remember it was Rivas' fight, but he seemed to slow up. Jennings was coming back into it. And then by the late stages of the fight, rounds nine, 10, etc., it was anybody's fight. That's how close it was. The Rivas corner appeared to be very animated. And, you know, they were speaking... I think French a lot of the time, so I'm not sure 100% exactly what they were telling them, but they seemed very animated uh, in this corner, and I was assuming that they were telling him, look, this fight is close, you need to go for it. You can't be waiting around and all that kind of business. And in the 12th round, he did go for it. He caught Bryant Jennings with a big shot, and prior to this, nobody had really been hurt in the fight. Jennings had caught Revis with some decent shots. Revis had caught Jennings here and there. Uh... But nobody had been hurt. Nobody had been down prior to this. But in the 12th, yeah, Rivas caught Jennings with a good shot. Jennings backed up to, to the ropes. Rivas followed up with a flurry of hard punches. And down went Brian Jennings. His mouth was bloodied. His nose, I think, was bloodied too. He got back up, but Rivas was all over him like a harbor shark. And managed to pile under pressure and get the referee to step in and stop it. Now... I came to find out that this venue that a fight took place in, the Turning Stone Resort and Casino in Verona, is the very same place where Bryant Jennings fought Luis Ortiz. You see it there. And Tim Bradley suggested that Bryant Jennings may have been haunted by the fact that the fight was taking place at this venue because this venue doesn't hold very pleasant memories for Bryant Jennings. Now, I know a lot of people are going to dismiss that and say, oh, he would have lost anyway. And yeah, maybe he would. Uh, but the fight was close going into the final round. You'll see there, uh, one of the judges had Jennings up by three and the two other judges had Revis up, one of them by one round, the other one had him up by uh, three rounds. So it was a close fight and... If Jennings had survived the last round and won that last round, the 12th, it would have been a split decision draw, if my maths serves me right. Uh, if Rivas had won the final round without stopping Jennings, you know, and without knocking him down, it would have been a split decision win for Rivas. So it was a close fight. It was all in the balance. 
in terms of Jennings potentially being haunted by the fight taking place in this venue, how much of an effect would that have on his performance? Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. Jennings seemed very cautious through most of the bout. Like he didn't want to exchange. And maybe he just felt power from Revis early on, which intimidated him. Or perhaps there was some effect from uh, the uh, Luis Ortiz fight in the back of his mind. Because the reason why I raised this is because that's something that Tim Bradley talked about on the ESPN broadcast. He said, as a fighter, I know your boxing is so, so much of a mental game that he would have been coming into this venue with, you know, demons from the last time he was here. Now, some fighters are not affected by things like this. Other fighters are. Other fighters are superstitious. So it all depends on the individual and how they cope mentally. But I can assure you that there are some fighters who would be affected. Their performance would be affected by coming back to the venue where they got knocked out before. Uh, other fighters wouldn't be. So, you know, you make it out what you will. Perhaps Brant Jennings would have lost anyway. But it is worth talking about, particularly considering, you know, uh, someone like Tim Bradley bringing it up. But yeah, Oscar Rivas gets the win. Stops Brian Jennings in the 12th. He's an interesting heavyweight. There are not many short heavyweights out there who are contenders in terms of guys who are six foot or shorter. And a lot of boxing fans have been crying out for a short heavyweight because people love Mike Tyson. People loved Joe Frazier. People loved Rocky Marciano. And people want a return of one of those kind of heavyweights. A short, explosive guy who pals on the pressure and puts it on people. I'm not sure, excuse me, I'm not sure at this point if Oscar Rivas is that guy. He weighed, what was he, 200, 234 pounds against Brian Jennings. And that's, you know, that's about average for him looking through his weights here. I would prefer to see Oscar Rivas about 10 pounds lighter. He's not fat at all, quite the opposite. I think he carries a little bit too much muscle, truth be told, uh, for a guy who's only six feet tall. I think if he dropped maybe 10 pound of muscle, it might give him a bit of extra speed, a bit of extra mobility, a bit of extra stamina. This fight wasn't fought at a breakneck pace. You know, it, it, there wasn't a lot of punches thrown by either man. It was actually a quite dull fight in all honesty. But Oscar Rivas appeared to gas in the second half of the fight. And I think that was why he was inactive in so many of the rounds and why his team had to get on his case and tell him to pick it up. I just think he's carrying a bit too much muscle there. You know, if he would just, as I say, lose 10 pounds of muscle, lay off the weights a little bit. You know, I'm not saying cut them out completely, but just lay off them a little bit. Lose some of that bulk. I think he'd gain a bit of speed, a bit of stamina and mobility. Because as I said previously, Rivas really doesn't have any head movement to speak of. And when you are very muscular, sometimes... It can make you stiff and less supple. And that can uh, hamper your ability to move your upper body. So just some things to consider. But he is an interesting addition to the heavyweight division. As I say, 26 and 0, 18 KOs, 31 years of age. So it's not too old for a heavyweight, if that is indeed his real age. <laughs> and he's just got the biggest win of his career over Brian Jennings. This was for the NABF title. Uh, the IBF international title and the WBO, NABO heavyweight title. So, you know, these are secondary titles, but I have to imagine that he will move up in the IBF and WB, sorry, WBO, I said WBA there. I have to imagine he's going to move up now in the IBF and WBO rankings uh, due to this win. And he might move up in the rankings of other sanctioned bodies, but certainly those two, the IBF and the WBO, you can expect him when their rankings update to uh, have moved up. So let me know what you felt about Oscar Rivas' performance and what you make of him as a fighter in general. All right, it's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about two pounds a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. 
You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.